Do I have my sharing? Now we've come. Yeah. Yes, Dorothy, can you see that picture? Can you see the screen? Yes, Roston Dub, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, sir. Morning. Morning, sir. Yeah, do you see the screen? Can you see the first page? Uh, yes, it's written business, school of business and economics. Yes. Is yes. it very clear? Is it very clear? Yeah, yes, it's clear. How about these writings? Yeah, they are they very clear? Yes, semester May to August 2020, topic 11, vertical integration. What about uh, down here? Do you read this uh, footer? Yes, Bibam 422, strategic management. So, I wanted just to get to, to test. We're just testing to ensure that uh, when you read, you can read what we're doing. Yes, I can see we are joined by Jacqueline Mallow. I want to say good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I can see Mbudia. I want to say welcome to this class. And I want to say this is our 11th uh, week, 11th session. Uh, since we started the journey at the beginning of this trimester, which is about 11 weeks ago now. And I want to thank each one of you for being there because it takes two to tangle, as they say. The student is there, the malim is there, and of course the technology is there. We appreciate the university and more. So we thank God for this uh, far he has brought us. And as we begin, uh, begin this class, I want to say that I've enjoyed this class since the beginning. I'm sure you're also enjoying it, meeting new students and uh, interacting with you. Uh, we expect this to be very interactive in that you are able, you have uh, two channels of communicating. One is to chat there by sending your comments as we go along. It's interactive and you can also grab your mic and then uh, ask a question or answer a comment or comment on anything that we'll be discussing regarding the course. Otherwise, I hope the week has been good. For me, it has been very busy, which is, I thank God for it. And of course, we need to keep ourselves uh, safe, distancing, uh, washing our hands as hygiene, uh, and then uh, having masks, wearing masks. I have one here, I'm not wearing because I'm in my room, in my office, uh, in Eldoret. And this is good enough that uh, we can work from far. The challenges that uh, we have been facing as a country and globally, and higher institutions of learning is we cannot have fiscal uh, meetings, but we can have actual meetings like this. So we, we are happy, we thank God for this. Uh, today, as I see, uh, as you see the topic there is vertical integration, which is part of the strategies a company can use to be able to expand its operations and more so on the journey to getting what we call competitive advantage. Uh, strategy management at the end of the day is about competitive advantage that you'll be there tomorrow and you will do better tomorrow than any other time in the past and better than your competitors. We have seven of us. Uh, Alan Adwara has joined us. Felicitas Bogo has come in. He said Jacqueline was there and Boothia and uh, of course Rosendo Bansiombua. Congratulations, Shombua. You are the first one on the line uh, who came to class. Thank you very much. Now, uh, as I think without taking much time, we want to continue uh, with the, the next session, which is, I mean, next slide. Next slide here is um, looking at uh, normally Malim likes a picture for the day, and this is related to our course today. Picture for the day. And picture for the day here is closely related to what we are doing today. Talking about vertical integration and comparing also with horizontal integration. And you can see here pictorially, the question is, what do we see in this picture? Can we have some people commenting on this? Comment on what you see, on what you see in this picture. Where commanding means, uh, not just saying I see vertical, I see horizontal, but tell us a little more. Comment on what you see in this picture. I want you to tell us more. If you are looking at the first, the first column and you look at the second column, tell us, what do you see more here? Comment, uh, you're free to grab your mic and say something, or you are also free to uh, type uh, responses uh, on the panel here in terms of a public chat. Let me sip the water. 
Comment on what you see here. I've enlarged them a little bit. A little longer, bigger again. Hmm. What do we see, comment? Anybody, Rostondo, yes. Um, I can see a processing company. Yes, and which one? The main, the main uh, the vertical one. Uh -huh. uh, the main thing is meat. Uh -huh. And you can see that, first of all, we have the cows. Mm -hmm. Then it is a full as a low material. Mm -hmm. Then it's taken to the slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. And then it's stored in a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Then cooled in a warehouse, packaged, mm -hmm. and then delivered. So it's like a process mm -hmm. of how we obtain the meat. So it's a processing company of the meat. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Very good. Very good. That is the one on the left hand side, right? You are looking at the left hand side, is that right? Yes. Yes. Thank you, thank you, excellent. That's a good, good answer, uh, Rostendorf. Let's see here others. What about this one on the right hand side? Anybody else? Anybody else? Can grab your mic and tell us, what do we see? What do we see on the right hand side? Hmm. Anybody? Yes. More responses I see here. Yes. I see here. Shambua, Dorothy Mon, Prof. Yes. And see here. Comment on what you see. I see two cattle. Yes. What else about those cattle at war? You, you need to say more. You know, as a manager, all of you are managers now, 42s, you know. I'm um, looking at you as managers. Tomorrow I can hire you. The companies that are there and tell me, get, get us good workers. I say they're here. These are managers. Jacqueline, don't say two companies. What else about them? Shombu, I can see processing company, yes. But what else? What about them? Just processing, what else? It's a good examination question. I just say, can you discuss what you see in this picture? So you tell us two pages of what you see in vertical degradation or horizontal. Eh? Yeah. What else? We see this, yeah? Anything else? Anything else? See people are typing, but you can grab your mic and say more, like Rostanda, which is very good. She explained, she saw cattle, she saw slaughterhouse, she saw refrigerated railroads, these are transportation in the US. They used to actually, they don't use trucks like we do here. Railways, big farms have uh, their slaughterhouse that connected the railway. So they are refrigerated cars or boxes or wagons, and they will transport that all the way, you know? A way to cool the warehouses, meat packaging plants that are packaged them, you know, and so on. And you can see wagons also transport, delivering them. It's driven by wagon means those are years that before the vehicles came. Eh? We had delivered wagons. Here we have meat being delivered in meat vans and even two piggies doing it. Delivering this. And also industries here, you can see some industry packages. The industry are doing what? They are also packaging them and so on. So we see a whole chain. Hmm. Right, let's get some responses. Yes, you can see processing plan, uh, oil refinery. Yes, Richard Irreri, you see something here, Richard Irreri. You want to say something about that, even Katule, Magreth. You want to say something here, what do you see? It's an oil company, what do you see? That oil company, Magreth? Yeah? What do we see here? Yes, uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline Malo. Jacqueline before, or Ma yes, Jacqueline Malo. Hello, Jacqueline. You disappeared again. I saw somebody wanted to say something there. What about this oil company here? Yeah, oil processing, yeah, Butyamos. Second picture can see a main oil company and other independent companies which are feeding the main. Aha, feeding the main one. Excellent, um, Butia. Yeah, Felicitas Mbogo on the other side. I see horizontal degree. Yeah, horizontal integration. What does that mean? Where have where we have oil company and independent oil refiners, the arrows mean they depend on the, uh -huh. they depend on the other one, they feed that one. You see, they feed this big company here. Wow, interesting. So these two pictures show actually two ways of integration for a company does in terms of strategies. You either do, yes, Jacqueline Malo? Yes, Jacqueline? 
Oh, it disappeared again. Now, so what you do is there is vertical integration and there is horizontal integration. Vertical is from the raw products. Controlling this all the way, you have cattle, your farms, you are having cattle. And then you have your slaughterhouse, control slaughter. You have the transportation, you have the cool warehouses, packaging, you have it. And then you see the industry. The industries are here, but they control all this way up here. This is called vertical, vertical integration. And this one here, you can see one big company owning other companies, independent, acquired all this so that it is a big giant conglomerate or company owning refineries, small independent refineries. They bring the oil there, which is then blended and transported to the markets through the outlets. Horizontal, vertical. That's what these two pictures show. And they give us now an introduction to the course today. Listen, gentlemen, as we move the next stage here. Again, I want to welcome those of you who have just joined us. I'd welcome everybody earlier. I'd say the Karibuni Sara. As we continue this 11th session, uh, we're running up to mid August. That's when we reach the destination. Uh, that's when we are light, do exams, and finish the course. You know, this course will be done. And if you are finishing, you are ready to graduate by the end of the year. And then you join us in the work market. Some of you will come in and join our master's degree program meeting, by the way. Master's degree program is on the way. What this space is coming. By January, we have that program on board. So you'll be there. You'll be the pioneers. And I want some of you to join that program. Very innovative program. That's beside the point. Now, today, the menu is set before us here. As you see the menu. And before the menu, Malimu always likes to think about great thinkers, dreamers. Great thinkers here. One of them is by the name Richard Branson. And Richard Branson, as you remember, is the founder and the maverick entrepreneur who started a company called Virgin Group of Companies. There are islands there, airlines, there are hotels, many others. If you just go and Google Virgin Group of Companies or Richard Branson, his empire, you get your mind will be just open to, hey, a person doing great things. We have also Kenyans doing that, and some of you might be some of them. Now, this was his dream. If your dreams don't scare you, they are too small. You should be worried. Again, if your dreams don't scare you, they are too small. That means you do what? You must get worried. That's what Richard Branson said. So he's an entrepreneur, yes, but he's talking about management. He's talking about managing a whole empire of the Branson groups and companies or virgin group of companies. That was his saying. I like talking about sayings, great minds. Great minds inspire. Great minds challenge. Great minds give you ideas. Great mind opens you up. As you go through college and as you read about what other people have done and so on, you get opened up and you begin thinking also in the same way. Just as we are saying, your university is an, gave you an opportunity to invent your future. Inventing your future. That's our motto. And if you have gone through university now, you are 42 and you don't know our motto, and you have never impressed it, and never internalized it, you are like this fellow who dreams small, scared. You're finishing, you don't know what you're going to be doing next. Back to our course, vertical integration. What do we intend to cover during these three uh, hours or two half hours of, of video uh, conferencing? At the end of this topic, we expect to discuss, number one, what is vertical integration? As a business strategy, what is it? It is in the, in the supply chain. What is it? The vertical integration. You saw in the picture vertical integration from the farm all the way through the dinner the, the dinner table. As I talk about that, I Bitgo, the the, the CEO of Bitgo. Uh, this man is called uh, uh, Bimal Shah. While I was doing research in Kalangala Islands in, uh, in Uganda, Lake Victoria, Uganda, Lake Victoria part of Uganda, I met this man in interview at the airport. So we were coming back to Nairobi, just a few back, years back. I asked him, Bimal Shah, because I interacted with him while I was at, uh, ZIT, at, at USIU. I was teaching there as a professor of entrepreneurship and, uh, we were, uh, and management. 
and uh, we had a we had um, as they we developed a center of enterprise development, and we he was one of our key speakers. And I interviewed him. I also had interviewed him about his business dream. So I met him. When I met him, he said, what are you doing here? He said, look, what I'm trying to do is I have secured some rights, some uh, lease from the Ugandan government to lease uh, about a thousand acres in the islands of Kalangala and uh, adjoining islands so that I'm able to grow uh, palm trees. Because the climate here, we've done research and found that palm trees can grow well here and we can then extract palm oil, which we use as the main ingredient to our products. Products including oil, uh, the cooking oil, uh, the fat, uh, the, the soaps that we have from Vima from Bitco Industries. Oh, interesting. Oh, so you are from here. Yes, yes, also in Kenya. We are also in the in Lamo area and the coastal strip. We also have secured thousands of acres. We are growing palm trees. Why? Why? He said because the palm oil we import, the main ingredient in our products comes from Malaysia, the Far East. And the cost is high because of shipment, because of a lot of uh, regulations, international trade. But here it will be easier to grow it in Kenya, ship it to, to Nairobi, to Tika, grow it in Uganda, ship it to, to, to Kenya, and it will be cheaper and it will reduce the value, the cost of the products for us and for the consumers. I said, that's a bright idea. Anyway, what am I saying? I'm saying, let me say this, the statement which is uh, coming up is we want to talk about the farms. That means from the farm. When we grow the palm trees that give us the oil to the dinner table where people are seated and enjoying our products the oil they use to cook their food enjoying their dinner or lunch or the margarine they, they use in their bread and whatever we want to move from the farm that means the growing all the way to the dinner table or lunch table i said it's interesting so what was he saying he was saying exactly what this picture was showing us what we call vertical integration. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be discussing and appreciating what's vertical integration. We'll analyze the type of vertical integration. We we'll discuss what are mergers and acquisitions. We we'll discuss, we'll appreciate the reason why this happens and evaluate takeover strategies. That's what we are going to be doing during these next few hours. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to fasten your seat belts. Ready? Discussion is there. Use the big blue, blue button. Uh, we are going to be using to interact. Please get your mic, speak, or type uh, whatever response you can talk. I think it will be very, very good so that we make it as interactive as possible. This is the beauty about technology. Now, the second slide is taking us about talking about now what is vertical integration? Primer on vertical integration. What is vertical integration? An introduction. Vertical integration here, and you can reduce it a little bit for me to see. I'm sure you can see that. Vertical integration here is a strategy whereby a company owns or controls its suppliers, its distributors, or retail location to control its value or supply chain. Supply controlling the whole suppliers on the other end. You saw that picture, which was showing from the farm where you're growing, you're keeping cattle, to the factory and to the the industries and the distribution. That's what it, this definition is. That is control of company controls, owns or controls those processes. So that if you are an Unga Mila or say, yes, a Mila, maize flour, you don't need to be buying from the, of course you can buy from the suppliers, from cereals board and so on, the maize, the farmers directly but you can also own farms or lease farms right on the ground go to kitale or where this maize grown in the thousands of acres lease the land grow the maize you need your own quality transport them to your storage you know and then mill them that's one way and then mill them and give them to distributors or you can also distribute it package it mill package and distribute to the retailers. Now there's supermarkets and any other person who wants to do that. So you are controlling the whole chain. This is called vertical integration. And that's what it is in a nutshell. Be it in manufacturing, be it in a primary industry, you go control the primary, the primary, secondary industry and tertiary. Primary being the extractive industries, if I may use that term, extractive industries, farming, fishing, mining. The secondary ones are the milling, 
you are a manufacturing, you are turning, you are adding value. And then the tertiary ones are actually the distributive side on the other end, whereby you are having services, offering services, tertiary services. So you can look at it that way. That is vertical integration. Vertical integration is a strategy that many companies use to gain control over the industry's value chain, supply chain and value chain. Vertical integration is different from horizontal integration, where a corporate usually acquires or mergers with a competitor in the same industry. You saw the oil industry. If I might take us back again to slide number one, let's just move back to slide number one. As and gentlemen, for those of you who just joined us, look at these slides. This one is vertical in that it's a whole line up to distribution, delivery wagons to distribute packed meat to people now, to retailers, to wholesalers, I mean, to people who are distributing. Your factory, you're packaging the meat and you distribute it out from the farm. Horizontal is you're controlling all these other industries but uh, the oil independent oil refineries bring it to you. They, they refine it and bring it to you so that you package it and you can also do what? You package it, blend it, and have your name on it. So they sell to you. You control them. You own them. Controlling shares in this. That's what it means when you talk about horizontal and vertical. And then we go back to slide four, where we were. Yes, uh, Josephine, I can see Josephine there. You want to say something? Yes? right so slide four where we are talking about uh vertical integrations many companies used to control uh, over the industry value chain uh, then the horizontal integration where corporate acquires competitors yes in the same industry it's usually composed of one or two companies involved in different stages years of production that is for vertical the supply chain incorporates all the steps from taking a raw material like the beef to turning into meat products and selling the product in a sense, companies that are vertically integrated own multiple parts of their supply chain. Yes, you own multiple parts of your supply chain from the table, from the farm to the table. This is what the words used by Vimal Shah when I talked with him. From the farm to the table. That's what does it mean? It means you control the whole chain. And therefore, you can have even higher profits, as we'll see later on. That. What's the purpose of doing that exactly? What do you gain out of it? Right, we go along. So we get along. We're talking about an example of vertical integrations. A company may buy or out buy out a producer of cotton as well as t-shirt manufacturing company, and then might market and sell the products themselves. A company may buy or buy out a producer of cotton. That means the farming, as I said that the farming, the transportation, and the manufacturing and distribution, the whole whole chain owned by that so the original company now a conglomerate of several companies along the same vertical or same kind product is now control of the four parts of the of the supply chain commodities which is the primary industries you are actually extracting them from the field to manufacturing them to distributing them and retailing wow what a great one what a good one you control everything and that's why governments have laws against that in fact, uh, there, were, there were regulations that when you manufacture, you don't distribute. That's what Asian companies were doing immediately after independence in the 60s, late 60s, and 70s. Government was very keen about that. Today, I think there are still there are laws that regulate that. When you are manufacturing, other people should be able to distribute and other people should be able to retail so that you create jobs and opportunities for more people than controlling it, mm, than becoming a monopoly. Because that ties on the monopoly business, where you can monopolize everything. It's like Kenya Power is monopolized. People say Kenya Power is in a monopoly. They, they were controlling the, the production, you know, Kenya Power, production through these uh, falls and so on, the production, all the distribution, and all the way to retailing. That was a monopoly. There are companies like those ones, and the government is, unless they are government the companies, or corporations normally the, the laws don't allow that you can't be licensed for all that unless you have separate companies kenyans have now come with the new is separate companies to run them so that you are not but you are owned the company is separate but it's owned by the parent company this is what's happening today as we'll see shortly yeah there are two ways of a company can practice vertical integration depending on what type of company it is is either backward integration or forward integration backward is going back to the raw materials going back to what we call the primary, the commodities. And forward is looking at up to the distribution level, up to the end. Now, maybe I can pose a question here. 
Do you have examples? Give us examples of vertical integration. Give us examples of vertical integration. Integration in any in an industry. In any industry of your choice. Industry means in a sector of your choice. That means sector. Sector of choice. Sector of choice. Give us examples of vertical integration in in any sector of your choice. What examples can you give us? We've said a company producing cotton, a company producing a pro produce of cotton, as well as t-shirt manufacturing company, and then might market all this. So you control the production, you control the manufacturing, you control the distribution. What companies are there? May I get some comments, please? Yes, and five of us, can I hear some comments? As we continue, if you are not able to the public chat here, you can always grab your mic and speak and tell us this company appears. Yes, goodbye, Kelvin. Goodbye, Kelvin. Is that a mistake or you wanted to say something? Goodbye. Anybody? Give us examples of vertical integration in Kenya. Let me sip some water. Vertical integration. Yeah. I'm waiting to read from you or to hear. Yeah. Anybody who wants to say something? Yes, Alan Odwar. You saw cattle in that other picture. Can I can you give us examples of vertical integration? Alan Odwar, are we together? Mm. Yes, Alan Odwar, I can see you. Your phone's on. Alan Odwar. We are all managers. I see Rostondo and uh, Alan is still quiet. Yes, Rostondo, can you give us an example, please? Uh, I can give an example of Brookside. Yes. Uh, Brookside company uses vertical integration because uh, they're able to find their own low materials and follow the process that uh, you have just illustrated. And so I think Brookside company uses vertical integration. Mm -hmm. What has he done? Because you give examples of what it's doing exactly. Yeah, Anjiro? Yes. Yes, it's doing it, but uh, what? how is he doing it? You want to say one, two, three things that they are doing? What are they controlling? Like they are manufacturing, of course, and they're also distributing. Yes, what else? Are they dealing with the cattle? Yes? Pardon. I was saying, are there, thank you very much. Yeah, I was just saying, you would have added to say, Brookside, what it does is it's also controlling the production, the animals in the field. I mean, they have farms, of course. Yes. They also have, yes. They have farms like uh, which one? Like uh, Delamere. Yes. And they have bought others like Ilara and others. Yes. yes. And they have allowed those names to continue. Eh? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rostendorp. Let's let's see the messages your friends have written here. I can see a number of them. I can see comment on you see the picture. No, this one here is uh, give us examples of vertical integration. I see here Felista said supermarkets can acquire control of farms to ensure supply of fresh vegetables. Exactly. Budia Sassini Company Limited has farms. Yes, Sassini has cars, farms. They grow tea. They are also a factor where they process the tea, transport. Exactly. Budia, you have said it. Thank you very much. I can see very clear. Alan Odor, Kenjen, it uses what? Kenjen uses vertical integration in that it uses steam uh, from the wells and the Karan and the other time use electricity and then distribute to Kenya. Yeah, okay. Some so partially they do it. Shombua del Monte, they have the factory where they process. They also have what? They grow so far. Good Shombua. I can see you are seeing it very well. I can see that. Lantana Tories. Kaniji is still company. Yeah, Kaniji. You want to say something about Kaniji? You know, when you say it, you say more. You know, it's much more better. Uh, to very faith. What about shoe manufacturer? Yes. What about them? Butter. Yeah. Are they owning, uh, let's say, um, raw materials? You know, it's cost to the raw materials or the distribution side of it. Yeah, butter does it because it has butter outlets. That's right. The manufacturer and they, they are doing actually the forward, which is good. Butter is one of them. You are right there. They have their own outlets. 
and they also have uh, franchises. Yeah, it's about franchises, right? But it's a one. Okay, good. Thank you very much. So here there are two types as you keep the answers coming. Backward integration and forward. What do these ones mean? Let's see this guy swimming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There are people here who are swimming. And I'm sure some of you are salivating to swim. Malim can't swim. He swallowed a lot of water one time. He was not able to swim. Many times he tried, but he failed. This is backward, backstroke. Can you see the swimmer? She's doing what? A backstroke. <laughs> I like that. And then the other guy, hey, the guy is really going forward, eh? swimming and competing. Eh? So it's like backward and forward. This one is backward. It's just like it shows by the fellow swimming backwards. Company expands backwards or downstream to take control of parts of production further back in the supply chain. Yeah, in the supply chain, if it's a question of uh, pineapples like Del Monte, they are dealing with the farm. They are farming. When you go to Thika, you can't miss. And drive along Thika that way all the way to Matu. You see farms of thousands, hundreds of thousands of acres growing pineapples owned by Del Monte. And then they model the manufacture, yeah. they market, they sell them, the pineapples. Hello. Very interesting. So that's part of, yes, I see Jacqueline there. Is that Jacqueline? You want to say something? Yes. Yes, Jacqueline, you want to say something? Yeah. Can you please, please, can you mute your phone if you are not saying something? Eh? Otherwise, Jacqueline, yes. Right, so backward integration. This is what it means. It is going, taking control of backwards, like the, the fellow dealing with the meat. If you are a seller of meat, you can follow up all the way to the manufacture, the keeping of cattle. Del Monde, Bulwark side is one of those and others. Controlling supply of materials or production of their, pro of their product. Materials or the production of those materials. That's what you do when you talk of backward. And remember about the swimmer swimming backstroke. Those of you who like swimming, yeah. Those of you who don't like swimming, just say people ba swim backwards. Now, the forward one, forward integration, is looking ahead. What does that mean? What it means here, as we see this gentleman or lady, very busy going forward. A company further downstream in the supply chain expands forwards by merging with a company on the retail or distribution end of getting the product to the consumer. Right. The distribution, you remember the picture we saw there with the wagon? These guys had they used wagons to distribute the meat. Here we use it. Here. Whereby you own the whole line, whereby you own the slaughterhouse, mm, and you package the meat and you deliver it. Kenya Meat Commission will have done very well. Yeah, Kenya Meat Commission have tried that. Eh? They have a retail outlet for their meat and so on. They don't know it very well, but that's what they are doing. So that you actually look forward, you control also the, the downstream side where you are going towards the consumer, reaching the consumer. So in this is a company further downstream, the supply chain expands forward by merging with a company, merging or controlling on the retail side and distribution side. And then getting the product out of the consumer. At the end, you are reaching the consumer. Wow, interesting. Here, you are controlling the farmer. You are the farmer yourself, if you are dealing with farming or mining. Out here, you are actually going to the person who is consuming you on the table. You are reaching the consumer. That is, in brief, what we mean by, by backward and forward. But let's read more about them. Eh? We talk about forward and backward. What do they mean exactly? When a company expands, I'll come back as a gentleman. I need to make it uh, easier for me to read also here. Yeah, and you can see. When a company expands, this is forward. Eh? We're talking about forward. When a company expands forward, it's a supply of chain. For example, manufactured brought to a retailer, it will be performing forward integration. This is typically done by companies close to the start of the supply chain, blah, blah. Since the company is expanding forward to getting the products out, the consumers is integrating forwards. It's getting moving to consumers. And then forward integration, yeah. Uh, strategy is effective when few, uh, okay, it gives about that, comments about uh, how is it effective. Effective if you call it distributors are available in the industry, distributors or retailers have high profit margins, and distributors are very expensive, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I see various examples here. Somebody has tied various examples here. Let's see. The gentleman, this charts here. Let's see. Somebody here uh, has gone into. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Jacqueline, Jacqueline, Jacqueline. Oh, Jacqueline, how are you? I can see you have gone into the internet and download stuff. Okay, it's good to download the stuff. It's good for us. But at this stage, what we're doing is just tell us from your own readings, you know. This is very good. You have downloaded stuff here. Uh, as example, vertical integration, yeah, all those notes, you have done them. But what I want to say is uh, benefits you have given us been benefits. That's okay. But what I want to encourage you to do is we are inter interacting. Let's interact. Give us your views as we go along. I think that's the best way to do it. You read, you tell us from your perspective. Downloading is good enough, but may not be helpful at this time when we're interacting, uh, Jacqueline. But it's good. Yeah, but let's see it in a different way. How do we interact in terms of you telling us from your perspective, give us these examples, like your friends are doing it, okay? And these other materials, you can study them later on and so on, share with other people. Thank you very much. So what we're saying here is we talked about this integration for what is looking at distribution, retailing, and you are looking at how forward you are moving forward. This video is very expensive. and So you are really controlling the whole line up to the front, yes. That's what we're saying. You are controlling up to the consumer from the farm or from the factory to the consumer. Limuru, the, the butter company, what they, they manufacture shoes and they also have outlets where they deal with the consumers directly, with the clients, they interact with clients directly. But it means it's good for you to know when is it possible, uh, so, uh, when is it effective. Good exam question. Yeah. How, we, when is this effective? When all these conditions are there. Right. We move on, ladies and gentlemen. We go to uh, the other one is now backward. And we have already alluded to backward. Backward integration is when a company expands backwards to control parts of production or where the primary industries are. When the farm merges with suppliers of raw materials, you merge with them. Either you merge and they become part of you, or you can also buy controlling shares, as we said. With the others that's interesting i see here and uh, when the farm merges with the suppliers of raw materials typically car the company gets everything it needs having to use outside sources and so on uh, you have actually take all that you need because yes, sir, you are actually suppliers you are owning them in other words you know in this sense major retail distributor companies will be manufacturing goods to save the transport yeah manufacturing goods like a good example here for example bread eh? tell me supermarkets now when you go to them the largest supermarkets have their own what they have their own bakeries. They used to get bread. They still get bread from other bakeries, established independent bakeries. But they also have a baking, you know, department. When you go to supermarket, go to Tuskis, you see that. Go to Naivas, you see that. Go to many of those supermarkets, including those ones near in Ruiru, even like Star Power Star. They have a bakery, you know, and they have an eatery. Sometimes some of them have an eatery in there, in the place where they sell ready-made meals. You know, they take away foods. They have also gone into that. You can see they are reaching the consumer. In other words, it's more or less like forward, uh, forward integration. Instead of uh, allowing you to go and cook, you can go and cook your food and so. But they also have a place where you can eat, so that they look at the customer in totality. When farms, uh, when farms merge with suppliers raw materials, yes, uh, that's backward. Eh? In the sense, major retail distribution companies will manufacture products which they sell. They manufacture this way also. Also, like they manufacture some of the things. They mix. The milk, they have dispensers. They buy milk in bulk. Instead of selling packaged ones uh, from companies, they will still have a few, but they also have their own. And they can also own animals. They can also own farms. It's very, very interesting. Yeah? Makes very interesting. Then backward integration here, as we say, is a strategy. Uh, when is it uh, common? A strategy is beneficial when farms' current suppliers are unreliable, your suppliers are unreliable, you need milk, and it's finished. Like somebody said, they used to supply milk, by 10 is done, because if you're supplying to a small kiosk or a shop or a supermarket and somebody comes and buys all the milk, you know, unless you have control over the supply, say, hey, bring some more milk, my milk is gone before midday. Unless you have that, then you have a problem. So that's what we're saying, that uh, really you can control the production of this. Uh, there are a few small suppliers, but many customer competitors, yes. It's another condition, there are a few suppliers. The industry is expanding rapidly. Yeah, that's another example. Industry is moving really very, very rapid. Suppliers earn high profit. These suppliers are getting high. Hey, we want to get some of that profit. How do we get it? By owning this, some of these supply routes. Own them or be in partnership with them, but basically own them more as a monopoly and so on and so forth. So that's what happens when we talk about forward integration, forward and backward integration. 
back one for integration. What are the advantages of vertical integration then? What are some of those advantages? Some of the advantages given here is one may, way to do this is to buy supplies in bulk. Yeah? The advantage bulk. is economies of scale. Shadrach Kirui, Kirui, please mute unless you want to say something. You achieve economies of scale. Very interesting. What do economies of scale mean? means you buy large quantities, then the lower the variable costs, the costs. You have volume. So achieve economies of scale is one of the advantages of vertical because you are dealing with from the supplier, from the farm to the table, the dinner table. It means you can you have the quantities you can supply or use or consume. So in that case, is they enjoy the economies of scale. You have removed these middlemen; they are not there. You have eliminated them because you do it directly, except employees now. Create new profit centers. Yes, you do if you own a company like what uh, Brookside did. In the competitors, what they did is the margin to them. Horizontal. Imagine those uh, small producers of milk, like uh, like uh, I said, one is Ilara. There was another one called uh, uh, another one which was called something in Eldor Diadonio. Many many of them. They merge with them so that what they are doing actually they acquire them. They can still trade in their own names, but when you read the packet, even Del Monte, they, 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 even Del Mer, you look at Del Mer, it's really Del Mer, The name is there, but it's packaged by Brookside down there. What does that mean? It means Brookside owns him or majority shares. So, economies of scale. Creating profit centers. Yes, those companies now, they are your profit centers. Instead of competing with you, they actually profit they earn comes to you. It's the same thing with the banks. We'll see later on. KCB acquiring National Bank of Kenya, NBK. You know, it still trades as NBK. It has clients, NBK. But who owns the bank? It's owned by KCB. So it's a profit center. Also, as you can look at that, it's a profit center. It's actually uh, an integration, and so on. Okay, then expand geographically. Yes, you can reach places which you could, and this is very clear now with Brookside, and also with the KCB. KCB is known as a branch, a bank that is branched across the globe, the country. But you see, it was not every place. A national bank is there, so they have acquired this, and they are enjoying the benefits of a bigger, bigger bank that has many branches. Yeah, Del Monte is the same, uh, the, the Le Maire, the Le Maire, but Brookside is the same thing. It is already in Naivasha where the Le Maire is and other places. So, and it's also in Nakur where Ilara is, many other milk plants, and even Eldoret where this milk was, and so on. So all these are creating profit centers. You expand geographically. So achieve economy of scale, create new profit centers, and expand geographically. Hmm. What else do we see here? What we see here also is they maintain quality control, yes, because now the quality is, is control. You want to sell products to people and they want to consume them and be able to be happy that the product is good. So companies that have more control over the production process are able to maintain high quality standards. Yeah. Vertical uh, differentiate from competitors. Okay. Vertical integration may allow a company to set itself apart from its competitors. A company that manufactures electronics could establish itself as a retailer, providing an experience for its customers that its competitors cannot. For example, when an Apple opened its first retail store in 2001, it was to cater the, for the customers in a way that Microsoft. And that's an example, one of those uh, in vertical integration. But what we're saying here is that it allows you to make yourself better than your competitors because you can offer quality products. Your competitors are struggling with that small store one company, but you are dealing with various companies and you can have, a, it can also be the advantage, by the way, it can also work against you if you don't con strictly control standards. Like you talk about the um, uh, Brookside, if you bought Ilara and the quality of Ilara production and so on was lower, then it might affect it. But generally, Ilara will have to rise up to the quality of Brookside and make sure that um, what products are selling meet the quality and the standards. The Lemaire is the same thing, you know, many of us who are the older generation, we used to take milk from the Lemaire especially yogurt. Yogurt in this country that was clear, good yogurt was the Le Maire and the University, and Egerton University, when it was university, when it was a college, Egerton College. They used to make good milk. You could enjoy the um, yogurt. Hope it's not lunch hour. People might be celebrating. Malim, we don't talk about yogurt when we are hungry. Uh, don't worry about that. It's not your lunch hour. 
next time we'll buy yogurt when we meet but we're saying what we're saying company like you know brookside uh, is riding on the lemaire the lemaire is a well-known name since 1900s you know and so its bodies uh you may say the integration some sort it's integration uh, more or less it was vertical also it's more or less horizontal because they are already the same business but it's combination of that and you can see the quality of the lemaire people still enjoy them Egadon university milk of course went down the quality and uh, milk or, or yogurt it was uh, one of the best it was the danish technology in kenya Egadon college whereby there's danish technology and they were doing this quality but quality went down everybody now everywhere makes yogurt but the yogurt that you want to buy is you want to say Teleme, original Teleme, which is not taken over brookside you know whether brookside maintains the quality or not i'm not sure i don't know the question is again you differentiate from your competitors of course the one company that has refused to be swallowed uh, that is kidunguri i did research on kidunguri i don't know mention in another class i did research on kidunguri very interesting company owned by farmers it's farmers cooperative milk dairy corporate society they have a factory they have a farmers distributing uh, they've actually reached down to the farmers themselves they give them quality animals quality ai services quality vet services and quality hay and so on so that they get quality milk so they have done some kind of vertical uh, uh, integration the corporate the factory is owned by the by the uh, cooperators and then, of course, they have reached out to the farmers and all down to even growing hay. The research I was doing was about growing hay so that they control even the inputs that go into milk production so that they have quality milk. They sell. Okay. Anyway, that's, that's the point. So differentiate among the competitors and protect propri proprietary processes or recipes. Yeah, Coca-Cola, for example, has a formula. To make Coca-Cola, you don't just need sugar. And what there is type of sugar called syrup sugar, is special sugar they put in the Coca Cola. There's also water which they refine. It's called ordinary water, ordinary water which is refined and okay, purified. And then they 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 concentrate, which gives the Coke test, is owned by Coca Cola company itself, and is vested in the directors. I think owners in Georgia in the U.S. That is a complicated formula for making cock. It's also for making Fanta. You know, the Fanta of, of, of Coca-Cola is different from these other Fantas that have come, orange, you know, the orange drink and others, or Sprite. The original test of Sprite remains, Cock remains. Cock has a flagship anyway. So the, the thing is you control that by doing what? By vertical integration. In some cases, secret recipes are so valuable that they are maintained as their true secret, trade secrets. And outsourcing their manufacturing, manufacturing would be unthinkable, such as the Coca-Cola. Yes, protecting that. So you vertically integrate distribution also, your production, distribution. You also, the ingredients of that formula, you also control it so that other people may not know how to use those ingredients. Use a chemical formula. What's the chemical formula? then it is owned by you. And even the people who came up with it are employees and shareholders, you know, so that you maintain them. They don't run away with the trade secrets or the formula for making Coca-Cola. You can say other companies have tried to come with cola, something cola, but it does not taste like the original Coke and so on. So anyway, it's part of what we call vertical integration, to control production, control extraction, production, and distribution. Advantages we've talked about there. See, are there other advantages to see this anymore? Advantages, no, no advantages, but I want to pose a question here. What are the advantages? What other advantages exist? What other advantages, ladies and gentlemen, so that we are together, advantages exist for vertical integration for VI. VI is vertical integration. What other advantages exist for VI? Give us that. Let's see. What other advantages can you think about? We've given you five of them. Going back to the first one here, we gave you the first one was achieve economies of scale, create new profit centers, expand geographically, other areas that have not been reached, maintain quality control. Yes, the product you're selling, you don't want somebody to sell the same product and they're not. That's why they got their name seriously. Differentiate to competitors, yes, from competitors and protecting proprietary processes or recipes. What do you think yourself? I'm sure you have an answer, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think yourself? 
let's get somebody to say something or you can of course uh, chat here uh, there's a public chat here please go ahead and tell me what other advantages exist for vertical integration besides the six we've given you let's hear from you ladies and gentlemen let's hear or read from you again here can we ask jacqueline jacqueline you have been uh huh? forefront vertical integration strategy in many farms yes jacqueline let us know what is it giving us a lot of stuff yeah it's good jacqueline yeah Jacqueline, Jacqueline, besides the circuits as you have given us here, or well as here, okay, that's very good. But can you tell us what other advantages exist? Yes? yes. What other advantages see Alan Dior? It makes the company remain competitive. The labor market, which is will enable me to objective, yes, it makes it competitive, right? You differentiate from competitors. What does that mean? It means you are competitive, which is very good. You are in your own line, your own class as you compare yourself with others. Okay? Vehicle integration allows the company to invest in assets that are highly special. Yes? The advantage is you can actually get assets that are highly specialized because you are the person. You are the, the, the everybody refers to you as the person. If they want anything about milk products, go to Brookside or go to Del Monte or go to whatever. For Jesus is Del Monte, example. Hmm? Del Monte, if you talk of Del Monte, people would buy that package. Del Monte will fall for it. Not these other packages that are trying to come in the market and compete and the colors are the same. You can see those things. Yes. Uh, I see Rosen W. Yes, because the integration company invests in the assets. Josephine Maina, yes, vertical integration and this competitive in the basket in products to consumers. Yes. You go. Yes, thank you very much. Quickly, consumer. Degua increase supply chain coordination. Yes, Fidelis Degua. This coordination because you are looking at right from the beginning, you know, the farm, processing, distribution, and so on. And after care, customer care, you are doing it. Yeah, the meat products are a very interesting example. We had first as Zimbabwe. Very integrated companies, yes. Uh, today, vertical integration, today, vertical integration increases the supply chain, coordination, yes. Coordination is very clear. You are only one company doing it, more or less. Guti, I see Ngud is there. Ngud is there is what? Ensure full control over the supply of raw materials to manufacture product. It allows for positive differentiation. Exactly. It's differentiation there, Katule. Mbutia improves sales and profitability by creating and selling its own brand. Yeah. Improving sales. You are selling your own brand, like Brookside. Brookside is a household name, by the way. Go anywhere else, you get Brookside. Yeah. It's just like KCC. Remember, new cases, they try to catch up. But new KCC has had a lot of these issues, headwinds, and so on. But KCC was. When you talk of Masiwa, Masiwa and the KCC, the brand is there. So KCC went to sleep. It's because it's a public company or whatever, or controlled very, very much by the public. Otherwise, uh, Brooks would not have come and be where it is if KCC was there. KCC was deliberately, I think, it's affected in a way. Otherwise, it was the KCC which was key in this country, and so on. Yeah, ensure control over supply. Yeah, faith way, vertical and the supply chain connection. Ensure control over the supply raw materials. Uh, it allows for positive con con differentiation. Yes, improve sales and profitability. Yes, Jemgeno Bibian, greater control over the supply line. Mugoye, vertical integration improves supply chain connection and so on. Yeah, so keep the answers coming as we go along because we are looking at vertical integration. What does it mean and what does it hold? Advantages are there and disadvantages. Integration involves supply chain coordination and reduces uh, of transportation costs. Yeah. Others are typing as the unit is typing. But we want to go on, ladies and gentlemen. You keep your answers coming. But the next stage I wanted here is disadvantages. Of course, there are also advantages and disadvantages. Whatever the advantages, not there are also disadvantages. They are cousins, they don't miss each other. There are benefits and there are those negative part of it so these advantages include unprofitable outcome vertical integration can be expensive because you are buying factories below your line there on the same line they could be unprofitable supply chain does not always lead to profit the profits it may require large investment to do this obsolescence due to new technologies yes you have bought these machines you are manufacturing you bought all everybody out machines you have them so they can be obsolete. That's another way of looking at it. Obsolescence comes in very, very well. 
that can be obsolete. Wow. That means you have dead stock. Yeah. Equipment that is not working because we have new equipment that's coming up. New automated machines, which are smaller in size and are more efficient, you know, because you acquired all these lines. So that's a possibility. But with integration, you can acquire assets that are obsolete. You don't have a good bargaining power and so on. Then the disadvantage continue three higher cost due to lower volume. Hmm. Lower volume. If you don't have volume, then you have higher costs because they're fixed costs. Lots of continuing focus on the originality business. Yes. What was your focus? Because if your focus was to manufacture textiles, and here you have gone into cotton farming, you've gone into retailing on the other hand, you're missing, you're losing out what is your, what is your focus. So again, there's a possibility with vertical integration of losing focus very highly. And then corporate culture. Mm, tension is corporate culture. You're getting these new companies. What's their corporate culture? How do they behave? Mm. The things that are, you think about. I see a number of you have answered my question here very well. Mm -hmm. The units may increase reduce transportation costs if common. Therefore, increase market share. Yes, vertical integration improves value chain. Yes, you know, greater control over supply and retail and can't be affected by supply withholding. Yeah, very good. Can't be there. Good, yeah. Sales and profitability by creating and selling own brand. All that. Those are good, good point. Good point. So now we want to talk to turn the leaf to the other side. We talked about advantages. Are there disadvantages? What disadvantages? What disadvantages exist? From vertical integration, BI. BI. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Keep on coming and explain them. Eh? Don't just tell me in your bubble, oh, it's that, it's costed. Just can you type them a little more? Say what it is. Yeah. Let's have some responses, please. Yes, Rostoldop, I see you there. Rostoldop, can I have yes. some responses? Uh, I can say one of the disadvantages yes. is that um, it can create uh, mark, uh, barriers to market entry because if yes. you take, for example, a company that uh, deals with crucial uh, law materials that are rarely found or they are scarce, they can dominate that law material. Therefore, even if another company is interested in such, in starting such uh, a company with similar law material, it's not going to be able to easily find the law material because the other company has dominated over its scarcity. Therefore, it can cause some barriers in market entry. Yes, market entry because you become monopoly more or less. That's right. That's true. Yeah. Let's uh, see others what they have said. I can see here Lantana Tories and profit of outcome. Yes, at advan a disadvantage that come. Uh, it's costly to maintain, uh, which will uh, not favor small and growing. Yeah. Alan and Dora said something there that actually create a monopoly and therefore it is anti entrepreneurial culture. Although now with the challenges, normally we say with the challenges, entrepreneurs will always find solutions. When you find that the river is blocked by someone upstream who is growing fruits and horticulture, 
and hear downstream you need water there are many ways of getting that water besides litigations and things like those you can even look at other sources of water you know, become more entrepreneurial maybe the single borehole you have your own water control and so anyway this is a suggestion but you are right that it creates anti uh you may say disadvantages of vertical integration could be uh, it's a more or less a monopoly so antitrust rules laws in america for example in america they usually have laws that you don't monopolize you allow other companies also to have opportunity so uh, he has blocked away ahead there the market is supplied by the same fellow there must be a way of controlling this fellow so anyway there are disadvantages you can see edward said edward said something there uh, fellow if you can read it's not simple because it requires companies to get involved in new aspects of supply chain yes higher costs due to lower volumes yes lower volumes unless you increase the volumes and keep in mind unis uh you to go developing new core competencies make uh, compromise existing yes you're actually going to water down you are bringing in other companies Companies. like the services of kcb if they continue if they uh, for example they're controlling now uh, for example the they bring in national bank quality can be affected or oh, brookside when it did uh, control uh, the others uh, you know uh, companies up there you find that you compromise your quality and possibility uh, lantana laws of continuing on the originating business yes outsourcing suppliers might be more efficient in the expert yeah Sourcing suppliers, people, other people to supply or retail. It's more efficient. What's your core business? But these guys are moving beyond that. Mapili, yeah, you may say money in Jumapili. Yeah, it is expensive since the company may need uh, large amounts of money. That's right. Yeah, expensive. You are going to do vertical integration. You are going to own supermarkets supplying these products. Then you can see what it means. Katule, it will be if you have capacity balancing problem. Yeah, capacity comes in in terms of maybe human resource, corporate culture tension. Yes. Uh, solar sense due to yeah somebody has mentioned that and then limited scope uh, scope to technical economies of scale yeah limited scope for the technical economies of scale the farms who are emerging will not be able to benefit from the technical uh, economies of scale that's possibility yes causes barriers to market entry by others right Fidelis, thank you thank you for those comments about the disadvantages of vertical integration those are some of the disadvantages. Besides this corporate culture, you know, said loss of continuity, higher, you know, higher cost due to lower volume and so on. Those are some of them. And as we continue, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are continuing here. We go to just a summary. This is just a summary. This is a summary from another source which talks about benefits and risks of vertical integration. Benefits, as you can see them here. Let's see if I can line this a little bit. Yeah, it can be enlarged. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the benefits are here. Security, securing critical suppliers. Mm. Vertical integration. Securing vertical suppliers. You are coming from backward to uh, forward. So the suppliers are critical. You are securing that. In fact, one of the things in entrepreneurship and even companies, organizations, we talk about companies as they do strategies. If you are going to set up a factory, manufacturing factory, make sure that you can control the supplies of raw materials make sure that you have a source reliable source reliable and reasonably pricing in terms of you can reliable means liability in price in quality in many things so make sure that you have a reliable source of raw materials otherwise you will put up a factory you spend a lot of resources there and at the end of the day you finish and then you are supplied with the first batch of supply second by the third one is poor quality the fourth one is nothing coming you frustrate your customers you frustrate them because you say you know these supplies have not come it's like what is happening today with covid 19. what's happening is that many companies are not manufacturing products they are use manufacture the speed they were because they are blaming what covid 19 you know we can't get things these are from china and we cannot get this product from this raw materials from china therefore we have to look for other sources i'm talking because i've had experience a close person who is doing that in my my household somebody who is importing things from china but because of this covid 19 he is not able to get those materials raw materials and i told him look think about alternative products that you can be able to so supplies coming there uh securing the suppliers and then lowering costs and, and improving quality these are key things it lowers costs and improves quality and then facilitates investment in specialized assets yes somebody mentioned earlier that you can acquire assets that are specialized because of integrating vertically 
And then, what are some of the risks of vertical integration? The risks are here. There is an increasing cost of reducing and reducing quality. Yes, increasing cost because you have to spend money to acquire those as those those companies upstream and those ones downstream. It's it's the amount is there and the quality comes in also, uh, reducing the quality. And uh, the quality here is you may really be able to not meet much quality expected. Reducing of flexibility, yeah, you are not really flexible. You are not tied. You are now tied more or less. Increasing of potential uh, legal rep re repercussions. Yes, legal repercussions. You have bought this. You are under monopoly and trust those kind of things. There's also risk of failure. Somebody has a risk of failure because when you expand too much then the chances are you spread yourself a little bit thinner and you may be able to compromise quality and you may also even attention to your core business disappears and even staff so you find that you're losing key people to competitors because you no longer pay much attention you are overspread you are looking at the suppliers on the other the retailers the distributors on one hand you are distributing you are looking at suppliers on one hand so you are caught in between and it becomes kind of a challenge which may affect your business at the end of the day. So that's a summary of these uh, uh, risks, uh, these benefits and risks of, of, um, of uh, vertical integration, BI. We move on, ladies and gentlemen. We look at um, hmm, mergers and acquisitions. Now, mergers and acquisitions still are a part of, when you look at the vertical integration, really, it is like it en encompasses there are companies upstream and there are companies downstream. Upstream is when you're talking about the raw materials where they're coming from. There are companies there. And also downstream, there are companies already who are in, who are in business. What do you do? You either merge with them or you acquire them. That's the way you're talking about in terms of the integration. Integration here is bringing them together into terms of making sure that you can control now the activities but we are offering services or goods to be able to win the market. So in this case, when you talk of mergers and acquisition, they are actually fall under the ampit, the ampit of, of, of integration, vertical integration. So merger or acquisition is the company. Uh, we're saying what here, a little bit here, mergers are what? Merger acquisition in a company sense can be defined as the combination of two or more companies into one new company or corporation. It's a combination of two or more companies into one company or corporation. Think about that. What is happening is, uh, I watch National Geographic quite a bit. Now I encourage you when you have time, you have subscribed to that, you star, it gives me every, every month I subscribe, pay a little money, and I watch National Geographic NGNW and I think NG National Geographic uh, while NGW and National Geographic while NGW and very interesting that been uh, in the last series I've been talking about the sharks you see sharks in the open sea sharks are the largest animals you can ever one was seen as the bull shark or the hammerhead shark it's 20 feet 20 feet and weighing 5,000 pounds. They use pounds in this case. 5,000 pounds. Bigger than an elephant. When you look at the land animals, the land animals are the elephants, the largest, the jumbo. Hmm. The jumbo is the largest. But then, when you look at uh, the other animals, as uh, cheetahs, these are small animals, in anyway, speed and so on. Uh, the hippo is also big enough, but not as large. But in the open ocean, you look at the sharks, huge animals. The bull shark is one they said weighing 5,000 pounds and it's 20, 20 feet long. It's tons of food. So it swallows fish. You know, it's diet is swallowing the smaller fish, the turtles also eat that the diet, and the, the dolphins, they all they are all swallowed up by this. It swallows other fish. So first it swallows them, it merges them. It's more or less like that. Interesting, eh? Which the current series of National Geographic, you see that very interesting. And it gives you a lot of interesting stuff. Because you where you can never go yourself. These oceanographers, the scientists and researchers, they've gone down deep 
into the deepest ocean and they see the habits of these animals and you see others swallowing others the world of swallowing and chewing and swallowing whole and so on and so forth interesting wild the wild interesting now coming back to mergers and acquisition a lot of bigger companies either merging we come and become one or i acquire you either forcefully or accept it. i swallow you mm, companies like those if you can think about that way very interesting come back here merger or acquisition in a company sense and be defined as a combination of two or more companies into one major company operation the main difference between a merger and acquisition lies in the way in which combination of the two companies is brought in merger or acquisition a merger is where usually a process of negotiation involved between the two companies uh, prior to combination taking place yeah it's negotiation we want to merge and this is what we we have these are the core business these are what we bring on board you bring yours on board too what you bring on board how do we then our shareholders or owners are negotiating and saying what are we paying one another or what is the structure in terms of ownership in terms of the stock shares and stocks what percentage now? You are a smaller company coming in with maybe 50 million. I am a huge company with my assets of over 250 million. So you are small. So do we merge? Yes. The smaller guy will say, yes, I merge. But when you merge, there are values that you had. Those are negotiations. That's why I talk about you negotiations. And even the value of your shares and in the market and things. There are many of those things which we don't get into. This is the area of accounting and finance people. That how do you determine the price of uh, shares of a company merging with the other? But there's negotiation. Acquisition, they are in acquisition, the negotiation process does not necessarily take place. That's what I put in red. Does not necessarily take place. In acquisition, company A buys company B. Company B becomes wholly owned by company A. And company B might be totally absorbed and cease to exist as a separate entity or a company A, exists as company A. Very interesting. Politics has a very interesting. There's a very interesting one about Nyaya time and uh, the Kano and the tractor. You know, Dume, tractor. Is it tractor? I don't know what was the name of that, uh, that party. And then, of course, there was a merger between the two. It was a merger or was it... Uh, acquisition it was supposed to be merger so party members the head of uh, the, the party leader in the was it ndp as ndp uh, became now the secretary general of the whole merged party and then there were other absorbed but the other parties came in and members of these parties senior members came in and joined in what happened it took a few years and then the partnership broke and somebody made a joke and say this. You need, you know, Kano has a what? The symbol is a cockerel, a cock, cockerel. And the NDP was a tractor. The joke was this, some of you may have read, it's a very interesting one. That when they merged, you know, when they merged, the cockerel swallowed the tractor. <laughs> When you saw the truck, in fact, they had uh, some artists that already represented this. It was a cockerel and a tractor in its stomach. The tractor in the stomach was not switched off. <laughs> it was switched off. So it was continued in the stomach of the what? Of the cockerel. It's a merger. It was a merger, an acquisition. Eh? It was more or less a merger, not acquisition, a merger. It continued rattling there until the, the, the cockerel, the jogo, had to spit it out. So it was spit out live as it was. So it remained, but uh, it had been affected one way or another. Anyway, that's a very interesting one. That's real in terms of parties. You talk of also political parties, when you talk of mergers and acquisitions. These things exist not only in business, but also in real life institutions. Like so that's a, that's a society one. Eh? Let's go. So mergers is usually process of negotiation. Acquisitions, when you have no mind negotiation, you are just taking over. Leave it or take it. That's what they tell you. Leave it or take it. Because at the end of the day, you'll go. Hmm? If you don't accept to work with us, then at the same time, we'll price you out. And the companies can do that very easily. They control the raw materials, the bigger company, control raw materials, control the supply line, and you are priced out if you don't join. So you are forcefully, you accept it or not, you are forcefully ac you accept to match. That's what the difference between uh, acquisition and a match. Acquisition is you may have very little room in negotiation. A merger is one where you have room to negotiate and so on. Although you may not much have much of a choice and so on. Anyway, we're coming there shortly. Right. 
mergers and acquisitions again in acquisitions the dominant company is usually referred to as acquirer in this case it was Kano which was acquiring uh, ndp uh, national development party and the lesser company is known as the acquired company the lesser company is often referred to as a target up to the point where it becomes acquired it's a target so there are companies are looking, targeting smaller companies. Big fish, I gave you about the, 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 the sharks. They target the smaller fish, which they can swallow, or smaller animals, smaller crustaceans, uh, like the dolphins and others, that they swallow. Even big fish, not necessarily, you may not talk necessarily about the sharks. Even the big fish normally swallow small ones, and butas. Tell people who are from an uh, area where there's fish, butas swallow smaller fish. Uh, the omenas are swallowed and so on. So this happens when you talk about acquisition. And then, of course, the mergers negotiate to get together. Achieving ownership may require purchase of all the target, the, of the target shares of the companies. So acquisition can be friendly or hostile, friendly willingness to, to buy, and unfriendly when it's not willing to buy. Okay, right. Next is the next one is here we come to, before we come to examples very quickly, mergers and acquisition again, Target may view the acquisition as an opportunity to develop new areas and use resources offered. If small companies are wish to develop and expand, also to become big. So instead of struggling, you can join a bigger company and you continue growing. Uh, the, this happened particularly in the case of a smaller company may actually actively, uh, actively seek out a larger partner to work with and so on. Uh, alternatively, this acquisition may be hostile. In this case, hostile targets just swallowed, taken up. Uh, hostile acquisitions are sometimes referred to as hostile takeovers. One tactic of avoiding a hostile takeover is for the target to seek another company with the, which is with the, which it would rather emerge, would rather merge or be acquired. This third company, if it agrees, is sometimes referred to as a white knight. And it comes to the rescue of the threatened target. Interesting one here. It's like even the fish is out there. But the fish, you know, they, 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 they survive in numbers. Fish in the ocean, open ocean. So that you are not swallowed by the shark or the bigger fish. You, you are in a school. You are together in large numbers. So the same thing here, that what happens to a company that it sees itself as a sitting duck. Sitting duck means that it can be swallowed any time by the bigger companies. It looks for other smaller companies that may be friendly. We merge so that we become a force to reckon with rather than being swallowed by the bigger company. That happens. And the one you are looking for is called white knight in the language you use here. White knight is the one that comes to rescue you from being swallowed. So you become a bigger company also, slightly bigger, of course, and you resist being swallowed. These are... We give you notes on this about mergers and acquisitions. Very interesting area, but you cannot avoid to mirror it with the natural environment out there. What happens? In the natural wild, there is the question of being swallowed, being marginalized, being swallowed, or being acquired. Basically, being swallowed and so on and so forth. Bigger companies swallowing smaller ones. It's common here. Now, I want to give examples. Can you give us example? Tiger sharks is very good. My friend, Alan uh, Dwarf. I can see you. You watch this sometimes. It's very good. Tigers and so on. Now. What are, with examples, examples of recent, uh, can somebody do that uh, mic, please? Mui and Dunda, can you, uh, can you, can you give your mic? Unless you want to say something. Give examples of mergers and or acquisitions in Kenya, acquisitions, 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 in the recent past in Kenya. Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. Just give examples of mergers and or acquisition in the recent past in Kenya. Can we get examples of this? You know, when we talk about mergers, and acquisitions and we have defined them very clearly here that uh, one is a force can be forceful one can be negotiated one can be friendly so can we look at the recent history in kenya what are some of those recent um uh, acquisitions listen gentlemen back to you anybody can grab the mic and say something you're free grab your mic wherever you are and tell malimu this is what i thought or tell the audience this is what i think uh, and there's no one who will laugh at you say, oh, you failed, man. No, nobody failed. We are all together. 
Please, let's interact. Yeah? Give us that. My lips sips water, a cup of water. Mm. I'm waiting to read from you or to hear from you. I'm waiting to read or hear from you. Yes, I can see here. Uh, Gather Evans, so thank you. NIC and CBA Bank. They became NCBA. Excellent. Yes, they merged. Did they merge or there was one acquired? Evanson. Were they was this a merger or was it an acquisition? This is a very excellent example, one of those. Which one was it? Merger or acquisition? Evanson, can you say something? I said mergers or acquisition and or acquisition. So which one is this? Yep. Evanson, we are waiting for you. Or any other member can also contribute to this. Was it a merger or was it an acquisition? Yes, Matthew, yes, it was a merger. Thank you. Why do you think it was a merger? Can you give reasons why it was a merger, Evanson? Why was it a merger? Tell us. Mm. We are managers now and we ask ourselves questions. It's a merger. Why? Why do you think it's a merger, not an acquisition? Yes, anybody can answer that question. Yes, Mutinia, Marianne. Want to say something, Mutinia? Mutinia, Mutinia, Mutinia. I can see you have your mic. Hello. Mutinia, are we together? Mutinia, are we together? Ah, oh, she switched it off. Sorry. If you have something to say, please. He said, we are here together. All right. Alan Odwar, too so much to the Brookside company in uh, and became they refresh. In the milk processing company, since Tuzo was finding it hard to maintain its operation, but now it is stable. Was it a merger? Is it still Tuzo? Yes, I see milk Tuzo. Was it a merger? Yes, Odwar. Alan Odwar, was it a merger or an acquisition? You said they merge, so it's a merge, I guess, because Tuzo has remained Tuzo, but it's under Brookside. What about this one of NIC and CBA? Thank you very much, Alan. What about this one of NCI and CBA? Was it a merger or was it an acquisition? Mm. I want to hear from you guys and others. Where are you? Atiena Gonga, Angonga, Jimgeno, Chris Mlogosi. Christian, Christian Wanjiru, where are we? Shadrach Ikrui, yes, Safaricom acquired. Uh, Shadrach Ikrui uh, acquired U Mobile. Yes, it was an acquisition, that one. So U is no longer there. Yeah, we don't see in the market, which is an acquisition, really. Uh -huh. Unis Wambala, acquisition of Kenel Gobil by Rubies. So what is it? Is it called Rubies? They merged or they acquired? It was acquired, okay? Thank you very much. We are thinking here a little bit. Where are the others? Are you thinking, you guys? Yeah, Roston Dobby, yes. To my uh to my uh, to my uh, max supermarket was acquired by quick mart supermarket so what's the name of that restaurant you can say if it was acquired it remained eh? quick mart eh? just for my international bank acquired by kcb it was acquired or a major acquired yes chimgena telecom and airtel very sambogo telecom and airtel what are the acquisitions or were they mergers? when you tell me you have to tell me happy bank kenya limited and diamond trust Limited to become Diamond Trust Bank of Kenya. Was it a major, Budia? Was it a major or was it an acquisition? Mm. It was an acquisition. Thank you, Budia. Diamond Trust, of course, remained his name. You can see that. When it's acquired, you can see here is the name remains of the acquirer because it's the bigger brother. So you use my name. Yeah, it's like marriage. Although this is not a good one, but marriage, whereby the man now is the name of the man. The lady takes the name of the man. Mrs. So and so. So it's, it's a fact. So, anyway, uh, that's Amaja. Okay, so Amaja is the name, is uh, actually changes here in this case. It's an acquisition. Abbey Bank was an acquisition, yes, where the name is retained by the majority shareholder or the bigger brother. Telcom uh, Maja, yes, acquisition, right? Maja and so on, right? So we can see this is happening in terms of uh, companies. It's still part of vertical integration and part of strategies used by organizations. Now, 
Here, when we talk about uh, mergers and acquisition again, Target may view acquisition as an opportunity to develop. Yeah, there are advantages and disadvantages when we look at this. This happens particularly in a case where a smaller company may deliver, may actively seek a larger company. That's what we saw two those doing that. Alternatively, acquisition may be hostile, as we said, it can be hostile, whereby you are forcefully taken. One tactic of avoiding a hostile takeover is a white knight. Oh, we said that earlier, and then this is repeated. Eh? Okay, Advantage, advantages probably here. Now, these are recent examples in Kenya. I hope we can read this. It's a bit too tiny from my end. You know, mergers, this is recent examples in Kenya. Mergers, the institutions, merge with the who. You can see here, you have cooperative merchant bank, merging with cooperative bank, and the name is Cooperative Bank of Kenya. Then you have who? You have a Biashara Bank with the investment mortgage. They became investment and mortgage, mortgage bank. And then you have First American and the Commercial Bank. They became Commercial Bank of Africa. So you can either say it's a major acquisition by who? And then you have East African Building Society and Akiba Bank. They became the EBS Bank. Prime Capital, and Savings and Loans, interesting one, called KCB, City Finance and Jami Bora. And then it became Jami Bora Bank. And Jami Bora is also being acquired by someone else. Eh? I think there's something happening here. Eh? Equatorial Commercial and Southern Credit became Equatorial Bank. NIC Group, PLC, and Commercial Bank, they became NCBAS, as was mentioned by others. And then you can see here when the dates are there. So you don't have to get there. But it's an example of those mergers. These are just examples of mergers and acquisitions. We said acquisition you are taken forcibly, and you tend to use the name of the person acquiring you. There are many other examples which you can give here. Brookside and Fresher and others. Right. We move on. And as we move on, we come to examples of acquisitions. Those who are mergers, and these are acquisitions. Look at the acquisitions. Eh? The acquisitions. Institution National Bank of Kenya, so it was not a merger, but acquired by KCB Group. Current name operations as, as, as current name, you know, they can uh, acquire, but you can still retain a name under respective brand names. They accepted to have respective brand names. You remain because customers, if you say, We have now become KCB, imagine when you have books, everything else is KCB, and you go there and they tell you, You know, I mean, this is National Bank, and then you tell you now today it's KCB, you get confused. So they retain the name of National Bank, but it's acquired owned 100% by KCB. I didn't, I don't see APSA here, my bank. APSA was Barclays Bank. And Barclays Bank was acquired by South African Bank. Uh, African, I think, banking something, APSA. Uh, and uh, so, uh, South Africa, AB of South Africa. And so, it became APSA. Acquired now the colors are all red. Up, so some of us are now getting trying to get used to the colors. But before that, it was just it was blue. We like blue color on Barclays Bank. When I opened a bank with the Barclays Bank in 2002, in 2003, on my account, first one there. Of course, I've been with Standard for many years. But when I went there and recently, when they're changing name, I felt so bad. My bank has changing name, but anyway. It was being acquired, so that's another history. So here, acquisitions are NBG, you can see KCB. Faul Kenya and Old Mutual became Faul Kenya Microfinance. Mashrek, yeah, Faul, uh, Mashrek Bank and Dubai became Dubai. Credit Agri uh, Agricole in the Suez and Bank of, of Africa became Bank of Africa Limited. EBS, Ecobank became Ecobank. Fina Bank and G Guarantee Bank became Guarantee Trust. KREP, oh, KREP was uh, many, many years. I have fond memories of KREP. Kenya Rural Enterprise Program. I have a lot of memories of that because they were the pioneering micro enterprise in this country. MFI, micro uh, institution, microfinance institution in this country. Even my degree, I did a study of KREP, a program which was called Juhudi. It was a pioneering microfinance in this country. And they revolutionized the way uh, financial, you can talk of fi fintech, financial approach was done. Because the Mama Wanjikus, Mama Tienos, Mama Cherogon, 
and many others, you can name them, could not access banks. And they were therefore using the model of the microfinance bank, which was started by Professor Yunus in, 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 in India, the India or Sri Lanka, in those countries there. You know, Professor Yunus came up with the model of how the unbankable could be banked by microfinance. And that's what it so carried up here in a lot of in memories. So it emerged with who it sent them and it became Kaira Bank. Yeah, the name is still Kaira, big name in this country. Then Equatorial Commercial with Mali Musako. Yeah. Mali Musako was a member of Mali Musako, although he is not very happy the way they handle things. Mali Musako and it became Equatorial Commercial. Because Mali Musako became a deposit taking and I think when he did it. So these are recent acquisitions. And as you see these recent acquisitions, of course, you have these notes. By the way, these notes are uploaded to YouTube. And YouTube, there you get all these notes. Again, to you coming to you. We also send you, we have also, we have also the manual, which is updated every uh, every 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 class. So at the end of the day, you have a complete manual that has all the documentation you need about uh, what we're discussing. So it's good for you to know the acquisition and the mergers in this country and the benefits of this, because there are a number of benefits of each as we'll be seeing shortly. So is there any other recent merger you can think about? I can see some of you Brookside and uh, what? Majas Brookside and Fresh Telecom Kenya and that. Yeah, Commercial Bank of Africa, DSTV and GoTV. They merged and became what? Did they merge or were they collaborating? Hmm. Did they merge or are they whatever it's a major okay so so let's go on jamming on next one is we're looking at a reason for mergers yeah why do companies merge why do they merge mergers and acquisitions take place you know they take place for various reasons mergers and acquisitions take place for many strategic business reasons it there must be strategic because why would i merge why would I be acquired by another company? It's strategic reasons. Strategic in that you are looking at the future. You look at the survival. Many companies today, every company, 99.9%, .9 one of the major challenges they face today is survival. Can I survive tomorrow and offer the service and goods? Can I maintain workers? Can I supply the goods and services? I, I I I I I told my clients, you know, the unwritten rule or regulation or policy is that when I open my door and say I'm selling chips and chicken, I must make sure that I supply chicken and chips. Even if the chicken becomes expensive or whatever, whatever, I make sure that I supply this. Or I give you an alternative. Maybe an alternative I can do that. But basically, reasons are survival. So merging and acquisitions are part of this game that I want to survive. I want to secure the shareholders so that they don't lose their money. And I want also to be profitable, a little bit profitable. And I want to meet the obligations where I was set for. Although when you merge, you find that uh, your core business may change a little bit depending on whom you are merging with. It can be marriage of convenience, as they say, just like the tractor and the cockerel. <laughs> this was many years back because of the, the coming election. So they said, well, why don't we match so that we continue? But the tractor was never <laughs> was never extinguished, so it had to be spit out. <laughs> Interesting, if you look at that and look at the history of this country, you can see a lot of mergers and so on, acquisitions and so forth. So in this case, as we continue, we're looking at uh, strategic business reasons, but the most common ones are as follows, as you can see. The most common ones are given here, increasing capabilities you want to increase your capabilities mm. that means it may come for expand research similar companies may be able to similarly the companies want to combine uh, to leverage ford and volvo as you see that companies may also come from acquiring unique technology platform rather than uh, trying to build it so you are looking at capabilities that you are able to meet. What are the capabilities? You may not have those, but the uh, company that's uh, merging with you uh, or acquiring you has all these advantages. So you have the bigger advantages because of the bigger brother or bigger sister. In other words, that's what it means. Or if you are uh, competing each other, you want to complement each other. Some of the reasons that come in. Okay. 
a requirement for specific skills, special skills, acquisition rather, of special skills and resources. It's a requisition. You need special skills and resources that your competitor has. It's the best ways to merge with them. They say, if you can't beat them, you join them. Exactly what happens here. Can beat them, you join them. And that's what it is with merging. Let's merge, man, your competitors. That's what's happened in this country, although politically you can see there are other interests coming in, handshakes, blah, 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 those kind of things. Yes, people signing agreements, post-election, before election, pre-election, all those kind of things. What are they trying to do really? They want, but they want to keep their identity, but they want to be associated with the winning, the winner, so that they can benefit a little bit. It's the same thing with the relationship with the sharks. Eh? When you see the sharks, tonight you watch National Geographic Wild. Just watch it and see. The sharks, I think they are still dealing with sharks. Within the sh big sharks, there are small fishes. They are not swallowed by the shark, small, but they continue, they ride on the shark. They are going with the shark. They are either riding on top or by the wing side or whatever. Wherever the shark is, even if it goes in speed, they are following. Why are they there? One of the comments was saying that, you know, it has all this escort. Because they feed from the main shark. As the shark uh, cannibalizes and eats the big its prey, the leftovers that fell and falling off, these guys feed on that. Because they cannot feed on their own. They're not keen on their own. It's like the hyenas, by the way. Hyenas in the wild is another one. Hyenas, what they do, they don't kill. Of course, they can kill small, small prey. But basically, they hover around the bigger ones, the, the, the other predators like lions and so on. So when the lion or leopard kills an animal, hyenas are very interesting. You watch this again, very, very interesting. You are that it's very cruel world. You know, the lion, lionesses are the ones who kill. So they go to the field, they will look for, a, identify a gazelle or whatever. They will chase it. They will work together as a team. They kill it. They are tired. Lions can go with speed. And after Killing or whatever, they get exhausted. So they sit down there to watch their, their prey. They've killed it. It is there. They eat a little bit. As they chew a little bit, probably. The hyenas now come. Big numbers. They are hungry, you know. And they're making a lot of noise. Wow, coming in, you know. And they come in here now. With their numbers, they intimidate the, the lion. And if the lions are few, they'll be intimidated away. They'll leave their food and go. The hyenas now fight over it. Into Interesting. Hyenas are hovering. They don't kill, they hover around. So the bigger companies, you know, the question of merging. You see where this company is going places. I can't go there myself. We merge with them. Or I accept to be acquired. So reasoning capability, strength of killing, prey, strength of being able to identify. Yeah, it's done by the big company and you are there benefiting. Okay, enough with that. Acquiring special skills, yeah, skills of killing and so on, so speed and so forth. So even companies are the same thing. Uh, and this happens quite a lot in uh, international organizations and so on. International companies, the multinationals, that's what happens. When you read about mergers and so on, there's reason why they merge. Others, things, other reasons include gaining competitive advantage or larger market share. Yep, you get a market share. You can get competitive advantage if you are the bigger company, the acquirer. You know, you now become more competitive. Uh, or if you are merging with another company that is only unique, unique skills and knowledge you acquire it and you synergize because synergy now comes in here and you now gain a competitive advantage a larger market share companies can decide to merge in order to gain better distribution and marketing networks company may want to expand into different markets where similar companies are already there so it's easy to merge with a company with a company in another country go and scout south sudan what companies local companies are there are they willing to merge with us so that we have a bigger market in sudan we may not be able to get there ourselves. It may take a lot more. But if there's already a company is established and we can look at it, look at its profile and its potential and growth, we can match with them. Yeah? And then, of course, we retain their names. Both they can retain their name or we, we can see, uh, we can negotiate how this is done. Diversify products. Yes, possible. You want to have more products. You only be dealing two lines. And the other lines that are being dealt with a smaller company, other companies, why not match with them? So that you have a bigger market share. They must focus on products. Right. And then, finally, as we come about here, surviving. It's about surviving. You either join us or you die. That's why it means if you can't beat them, you join them. Or else you die. So you want to survive. It's never easy for a company to willingly give up 
it's identity to another company. But sometimes the only option in order to the company to survive is for survival. During the financial crisis, many banks merged in order to, to leverage, deliverage failing uh, balance sheets that otherwise may have put them out of business and their dinosaurs, dinosaurs in the past ones. So survival is a key thing. They talk of survival. You merge to survive. A drive for increased management, effectiveness, and efficiency. Yes, again, yeah, effectiveness in terms of management, skills. There's a company that's doing very well because it has hired the best um, managers and so we want to enjoy that by merging with them these are things that happen it's like marriage of convenience you marry because you want to benefit from them and therefore you stick there and continue oh, benefiting you want to go into many other things there but i just talked about those those are things that happen so before we look at the overview here of reasons for mergers and acquisition can you mm -hmm, give us it Said what other reasons? Said what other reasons would company company, company use to merge with others? Uh, 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 with others, either competitors or whatever. Why? See, what other reasons would a company use to merge with others? What reason would they make this company merge with the others? Set what other reasons would a company use to merge with the others? What would make me, you know? I can see here, Alan Dwar, you enjoy watching that Geo, you are a part of me. Good. Tell others and you learn a lot in management, in entrepreneurship, in skills, in many things. You learn a lot of stuff. Wanjiru, Wanjiru, yes, you want to say something? Yes. Yes, Wanjiru. Another reason for mergers and accusation. Yes. Uh, it may be if it is a government directive. At sometimes the government may direct that another company merges with another or another right. acquire another. Yeah. Would the company say that really? Government? Yes, possible. Eh? Yes. Yeah. To reduce the number of maybe competition and so the company can do that. very good. Good point. Yes. Could it be policy, government policy to ensure that we don't duplicate a lot of these services? We can merge. Look at the cop look at the what? Look at the a good one from there. Is look at uh, Michuki rules. Michuki left a mark in this country, not like other ministers. Michuki, we can name the Michuki, Wangari, and a few others, but not many. Michuki came up with the Michuki rules. And then the circles, you remember, Matatus were competing. They still compete today, but they have an, some order came in, whereby they were told form circles, although there was not merging, but form corporate circles, so that we can identify you and there is quality in service, and so that we are able to see what it is. So they form these circles, which are, of course, they are working, but it's better. So, Anjiru, thank you very much. Could be government policy to make sure that we eliminate this. They tried to do that for the churches, by the way. It's still there. That they were trying to say is few churches that they wanted in this country. There are too many churches around. Some of them calling people left and right. Some of them are not really there. And so, the government was trying to come up with a policy that's only registered and have clergy that are trained, diploma at least, to be able to be registered to offer Sunday services as a church. But the churches were having them. They said, you can't regulate what? You can't regulate, control the spirit of God, you know? Leave us as we are, as long as we are law abiding. So anyway, it could become a policy uh, for government uh, people to march. So let's get some more other points. Other points? Well, points I can see here, uh, Alan, uh, meant loss. okay, Alan said something. So what are we saying here? We're saying here, Philistines, companies might to produce product quickly and also increase growth rate. Companies might to diversify their products, yes. Companies might so as to increase wealth in the, their shareholders, yes, so as to create a stronger brand, exactly. The profits are shared equally and among, yeah, well as, yeah. Okay, 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 I can see the answers here. Companies might to diversify their products, Philistines, companies might to quickly, yeah, product quickly and also increase growth. Mafias. Uh, better financial planning, yes, because you're dealing with the people who are actually small company, bigger company can do that. 
Alan, what do you mean by mental losses? What do you mean by losses here, Alan? Maybe you said something earlier. Like, and you're watching that, not your wild. Did you say losses? You didn't say that. Maybe it is something else you're saying. Uh, Mambia Paris, increased shareholder value. Okay. Value creation to companies, yes. Uh, Mary Ann, tax purposes, the company generates significant traffic income and merge with the company with a substantial carry, carry forward tax losses. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a very interesting one eh? for finance. Eh? So that when you come, these losses that are kind of written off, they reduce your tax. Oh, uh -huh. interesting one. Eh? Increase supply chain pricing, yes. Uh, so for the companies to grow, so as yeah, you want to grow, you have realized that you can't grow the competition. So you merge with another company and you move on, right? Ngudi, really, and company can merge when there is need to replace leadership. If the current can they identify someone with the company, yes, merge to see instead of poaching someone, poaching views, but you merge so that you acquire the knowledge, the skills of the experienced managers. Yeah, eliminating competition. Yeah, good. They were competition. You can't compete, you join them. Okay, very old at the at age. Right. So those are some of them. I can see Gado Amazon. Uh, government regulations, yes, just like uh, your sister or sister mentioned there, that the government regulations may acquire capital so that you lead much companies, emerging and so on and so forth. That's possible. You reduce all these companies and have them few. Just like they talk about uh, public transport in town, by the way. Public transport in the cities like Nairobi. You have all sorts of matatus. Why are they congesting the road and polluting the environment? Can we come and say with the one mass transit company run efficiently with the railway and then these fellows running matatus join up and become what shareholders these are some things that have been asked in other quarters this is something we can lobby our legislators that you know instead of polluting the cities with everybody with a small mandaz matatu hapa you know these contraptions some um, tuk-tuks and why don't we merge and have better clean transport because all those pollute there is emissions there is beside the emissions there's noise certain level of noise and somebody says but you know each one of those employs at least three people the research was shown that actually i'm at employs up to five people the ones you see are driver and conductor but when you go around and see other people in the stations where they go there are three other people so employs at least five so these five people at least five where would you take them if you have one mass transit system said retrain these people give them other things some of them can be take ticket collectors some of them can do many things they, they, they don't have to survive on shouting the whole day they can be able to uh, able to be absorbed in other parts anyway that's another point that can come when we talk about improving the cities the cities we want and for the future I see here some of the comments have come. Come regulations to achieve potential growth of the companies, diversification of product services, use company gross income, make some companies merge, diversify risk. Yeah, diversify risk this is a good one. A market is it's good. Diversify risk. Now let's go on briefly again. We are somewhere here. Let's continue with the next one is overview of now. We are looking at the bigger picture of now mergers and acquisition we've discussed what they are we've seen how they are done we've seen the advantages and disadvantages now we want to look at the steps of mergers if i really improve capacity let's thank you very much now we want to see one of the things here as an overview of these mergers the mergers and acquisition process process has many steps that can often take anywhere from six months to several years to complete right it's good that mergers is not a walk in the park or one-stop shop. It is negotiation, it is valuation of assets, it is actual legal issues coming in until you are able to agree on one direction forward, agree or disagree on the way forward. Right. So the typical there are ten steps that have been identified in many of the literature, a lot of literature. Beginning with the developing the acquisition strategy. Yes, you look, you scout around. We want to see which company. You are scouting like the big fish. Look at which company to, to acquire or to merge with. Then you set up your, your, your criteria. What will we be looking for in this company? What, are, what do we want to see in this company? And then you search for the potential acquisition targets. Yeah, what are the targets? Then? Once you look at the developer acquisition strategy, what's your strategy? What's your policy about acquisition? Because if you don't have policy on acquisition, you may put in place that, okay, our business of growth, our business strategy is to acquire. We'll be acquiring. But now, how do we do it? What is our criteria when we are going to acquire? Right now, your university is working on benchmarking. 
we want to benchmark with other universities. We're doing that already. We've been doing it. And this is, we're doing it now in a more detailed manner. Benchmark and then collaborate to these institutions. How do we benchmark? What are we looking for? That when we look at University X, we see these are good things in University X, which we don't have. Like doing a SWOT analysis. What are our strengths and our weaknesses? That's are internal. And then what are the opportunities out there and threats? Because we want to, uh, to collaborate in various programs. What are the threats? Will they, when they, might they buy us out? Might they outshine us? These are things that we put. So anyway, the company, they work on those kind of things. Eh? Set up the, M &D, uh, the, the criteria, search for potential targets. That's what we are doing. Which, which universities can we merge with? Not really merging, but can we collaborate with? Because we have our own identity, locally and internationally. We are actually looking at internationally. Because local is a lot of li rivalry, brother, library but we're looking overseas out there what institution can we see are doing well in technology innovation that we can be able to uh, learn from them and work together with them to move to the next level begin acquisition planning you put the plan there perform valuation analysis you are now do valuation analysis you negotiate you then due diligence is done then purchase and sell contract financial strategy comes in and closing the integration you are already matched. Now, let's look at it diagrammatically. Yes, that's the journey. Wow. Interesting journey. A little bit bigger. Interesting journey. You know the guy at the beginning, you are here. You have the policies, the guidelines that you are thinking about. You put together your strategy. How do you want to? Because you cannot just go into the war without sitting down to count, to look at we are going to war. Margins like war. You want to negotiate so that the competitor, the other side, is able to see the value you have, you are bringing in. I won't want to match with you if I don't see anything I'm gaining from you. And that's that's true. I won't. Even in marriage, the same thing. What are you gaining from the other partner? What are they gaining from you? Are there things that you can share? Are there things that will complement? The same story here. So acquisition, then acquisition criteria, then searching for the target. You know the black side, you're still very far. Eh? Then, of course, here, yeah, acquisition planning. Then here, five, you value and evaluate. Now you're beginning, now bring the other company now. Company X now. This company X comes. But here, it's the back, the, the, the pre, pre-major, as you can say. Before, you are already thinking and uh, doing your scouting and seeing what do we need, how do we go about it. And here, now you can negotiate and say, hi, guys, we are here on the board. Can we work together? Z now, company Z. Mm. Company Z says, yeah, we are ready. We're ready. Can match with you. Let's also look at you. And then here you are. Six is negotiation. You can now negotiate. Wow. What do we do, guys? How do we move? When do we move? How much will it cost? What is going, what are we going to gain? What are you going gaining? What am I losing? What are you losing? And so on. Then due diligence done. Yeah, I evaluate you. Look at your audit accounts for the last five years. Look at your profitability. Look at the markets. Look at the customers. Look at where you are. And then what you do next here is you purchase. Purchase and contract. You're buying, you're buying, paying out some money to be paid. And financing, you look at finance. You want to finance it and continue, continue financing and implementation. You implement a plateau. You reach the top. A journey. Nine. 10 steps. Let's look at each very quickly. Develop acquisition strategy. Involves around the acquirer having a clear idea of what they want. What is it that you want? Are you sure this is the direction expect to gain from making the acquisition? What are their business? What are they in? What do they expect to gain? And so on. Expand and so forth. Set the M and A. Merge and acquisition search criteria. What is your criteria? What is our criteria here? Yeah? For identifying potential target companies, e.g., profit margins, geographical location, customer. Yeah. This is some of the criteria you'll be looking at. What are the criteria? Search for potential acquisition targets. What are our targets? Hmm. We're looking for these targets. The acquirer uses the, the identified search criteria to look for and evaluate the potential targets of the company. And then, of course, you move to next step, step four, begin acquisition planning. The acquirer makes contact with one or more companies that meet the criteria. 
and appear to offer good value. The purpose to get more information and to see how I'm able to a merger or acquisition to be targeted. Hmm, very good one. You are now looking at what is it they have that we want to get to. Why I make contact with one or more companies that meet the criteria? You are looking at the companies, like I was saying, want to benchmark, and we look at about four universities. For free, I'll tell you one is in Africa, doing very well in uh, distance and e learning online. It has 400,000 students, you know. Another one is in the US, another one is in Europe. Uh, we look at this in Israel. You see, we are looking at this across the globe. Look at those com institutions. How are they? We have our criteria. Mm. Then a perform valuation analysis. Assume initial conduct and the conversation. Initial conduct, the conversation to go on well. They acquire as the target company to provide substantial information. Financial is what we said. Look at you. Don't just buy a company without knowing how is it. Maybe the company is actually being on the deathbed, being probably the, assume it's waiting to be what to be to be to be declared uh, bankrupt and that kind of thing. You may not want to acquire that company. You don't want to. You want to look at that one that has potential, not one that is uh, administrators have been sent in or are coming in any time to run the company on behalf of the shareholders. You no. Know? So you look at that. You uh, perform that. The due diligence is coming in here. Uh, number six. Negotiations can begin. You negotiate. Several evaluation models of the company. How do we want to work together? You see, once again, the initial offer has been uh, presented. The two companies can negotiate terms, details, uh, due diligence in the exhaustive process that begins when the offer has been accepted. When the offer has been accepted, due diligence aims to confirm or correct the acquirer's assessment. Yeah, the value of the target zone. You do due diligence to ensure that you confirm that what you are buying is not a lemon. So you buy lemon, lemons are good, but you can make lemonade out of them. But if you didn't want to make lemonade, that's not your idea. Your idea is to buy a company or merge a company that is existing, that is has a potential and is doing well. So due diligence, the books may lie. They tell you, okay, the books are good. Uh, we've uh, made it making profit, but is there a potential? It's a question you look at. Next one here is, uh, we move forward. Purchase and sell contract comes in. Purchase and sell contract. Yeah, assuming due diligence is completed, the next step forward is executing final contract for sale. Parties make a final decision and the purchase agreement, whether it's to be asset or whatever, and so on. And then finally, financing. Now, how do you finance the differences and closing the deal? Decision closes and management teams of the, of the target and the acquirer work together to the process of managing the two firms. Now, action move two together that's what it means a journey takes six or more months to acquire or merge to merge or acquire a company the willingness on both parties what we call uh at most good faith in the insurance term uh, your good faith and you all mean good and there is no uh, information that is withheld so that you begin merging with the other company so that tomorrow you don't come back and say hey you didn't tell us about this hey you didn't tell us no that's why it is very very clear to go through that process at any time in that process it, 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 the negotiation can stop because if you find that the other partner is not honest and truthful or there is uh, adverse economic environmental issues that may affect your margin you you stop and hold wait and see take another direction and so on so forth that's what it means margin control okay now, after finishing that, you can see it's a long journey, yeah? not very easy. Yeah. Now, the types are here. We're moving quickly. The types of mergers, there are five types conglomerate, horizontal, market extension, vertical merger, and the product, product extension merger. Now, this you can see, recall from what? You recall from the vertical integration. And some of them are common here, like horizontal merger, like vertical merger, product ex extension merger. All these are common. The term chosen to describe the merger depends on, there are three things it depends on. Which term of this do you use? Is your horizontal whatever? It depends on A, economic function. It's economic function of your merger. B, purpose of the uh, business transaction. Why are we doing this? Maybe you want to do vertical integration. And then our relationship between the merging companies. What would be your relationship? If it's a vertical merger, it means you have acquired the vertical going all the way to uh, to the production 
or if it is horizontally, are acquiring companies that are around there. And so the time relations in between there. Right, moving quickly, quickly, quickly. Uh, her next one here is, that's a picture there. Wow, interesting picture put it there of two gentlemen or ladies or gentleman and lady pushing together the two companies. Imagine, as we see that company, we see this from uh, I, the source is iStock eh? and the such iStock. You see, these companies are coming together for a purpose. They are merging. Every reason we mentioned on the other side, of the reasons they can merge, and they are there. You can see the given. The reasons are there. They can merge. Why they merge? Uh, we've mentioned them earlier. And here this. You can see the smaller one and the bigger company. This is a bigger company. This is a smaller company. They want to see if they can fit in very well. You know, and then when they fit in, they can run as one company, one big company. Yeah. Messages below here, I can see improve capacity utilization, diversify risk exactly. They diversify risk when these two companies, when this company, this one merges, using the products, yes, services. This is a unique services, unique services. Yes, achieve potential growth. Yeah, they can grow now. As a big company, they have a bigger share. They can grow. Okay. And then improve capacity utilization some companies can also might to pull the result together to store the image yes lost image exactly I mean, exactly what is happening with this company that is that picture very interesting picture hmm. and you imagine others just begin reflecting on this picture and this picture is showing something eh? wow companies merging it's possible to merge and uh, you can merge they are all benefits they are all pitfalls of course of merging the disadvantages are there i don't know if we saw the disadvantages of merging we may not have seen them. We just saw the advantages of matching. Can we think of the disadvantages of matching? You did mention about loss of identity. You know, you are no longer there. You are gone in terms of as a company, gone and gone for good because uh, you are now swallowed up by the other. Hmm. Right. Types of mergers. Here again, there is in details. And before we look at this type, even trees, you've seen trees. Eh? There's a particular tree. That swallows other trees, a parasite, parasitic. It normally grows. And you can see if you are, you are, you are observant, I um, observe the natural environments many times. I look at the natural environments and plants and trees. It's something very good, ladies and gentlemen. I encourage you look at observe nature and how things happen in nature. Some of them inform us even in business that there are there's a red tree that takes over the other one. The Mugumo tree, the Mugumo tree, I think it's like the Mugumo tree, swallows the other ones. If, if the seed is deposited by a bird because it has fruits on one, woe to that tree. Once the seed germinates, it will slowly sink its roots, get into the sap of this main one, slowly swallow it, and completely kill it. Merging. Trees, this merge, and very, very interesting. Parasitic ones do the same thing, they destroy the main parents. Also. But nevertheless, uh, that's another story for another day. Conglomerates, what are the types of mergers? A merger between firms that are involved in totally unrelated businesses. They are conglomerates. Between the Walt Disney, for example, and uh, ABC, they merge. This is conglomerate. They form huge companies, one group company, huge company that has a lot of companies, sub companies that are actually subsidiaries, you may say, that are not related business. They are there, conglomerates. Horizontal merger, a merger that occurs between farms within, like the oil companies. At the same level, the refineries can be, all the refineries can be able to buy the refineries at the same level. Buy all those, acquire them. We saw in the picture at the beginning. Remember the refinery, they are buying all the small refineries. That's horizontal merger. Market extension mergers takes place between two companies to deal in the same product, but in separate markets. Same product in separate markets. We have a Sudanese market and we have Kenyan market. So we merge our products. Same company, different companies, but dealing in different markets. Eh? Takes place between two companies that deal in same product, but different markets. So we merge a bigger market. We can also merge product extension mergers. This place between two companies uh, dealing with products that are related to each other and operate a different at the same market. Yeah, different from each other, the same thing. Verge and vertical merger between two companies producing different goods or services from a specific finished product. E automobile company joining with a parts supplier. Parts supplier, one manufacturing parts and the one who is assembling you can merge so that you do the supply of simple parts then you do the, the one we talked about earlier about vertical merging. All right, finally, coming towards the end. Before we do go over, takeover. Takeover strategy 
take over our cars when a company takes a bid to the other one. We talked about this company makes a bid quite. I think we this we had discussed is about takeover. We may have to do something here similar to the mergers. I think this is something we need to look at. We don't want to waste time on that takeover. Okay, three forms of takeovers. Yes, these are now more open up than what we had. Friendly takeover and welcome welcome a reverse takeover. Welcome friendly is the one where this negotiation. And welcome, which you say is hostile, just aggressive form, whereby the big brother comes and says, either you you accept by my terms or we let you die, or we take you by force. It happens. Or is a reverse one, where what happens when a private company takes over a public one? Reverse uh, takeover. You know, uh, the acquiring company must have enough capital to fund the takeover and so on. So these are forms. You can read them, and they're very interesting forms, takeovers, and so on and so forth. And then reasons for takeover, what are the reasons? Again, here the reasons are the except term takeover, uh, acquisition. Mm, companies that make attractive takeover include those with unique niche in the market, small companies, viable products, similar companies that are geographic. Growth. We mentioned this earlier. Which we don't want to repeat much of this, but it's a question the reasons why you are taking over or merging. Yeah, I'm almost a thin line between the two, three of them. Finally, finally, reflection, view the videos and comment them. Ladies and gentlemen, I have two videos here, very interesting ones, but vertical. Uh, and then merging and mergers, uh, you will view them and comment on each. I'll look at your notes, I'll read your comments. So I want you to look at them and comment on them. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to come to a close for today's class. And before I do that, I want to ask this question. We have gone through vertical integration, but if I start to what, mergers, it has touched acquisitions and it has looked at vertical, backward and forward linkages. And all these are touching on strategic management. We talk about strategic management and we talk about uh, strategies used by companies to either grow, expand and become a competitive, have a competitive advantage. So these are strategies that companies use. Good to know that. A company going places. You remember from the beginning when we had that dream. We talked about dream that you don't dream much, then you don't go far. We are there from the beginning. Yeah. So I, I would not want to take much time on this, but I want to say this. Um, as you study, we have notes. We also have the videos. Uh, you can also develop your own notes on this so that they help you in terms of understanding the concepts more. We also have at the end, we have also we give you a manual. The manual is building up, as I mentioned, every session, these 11 sessions now, the manual is building up. We'll give you before the end of the semester the manual, now the separate book. And then we also have what we do is we have taken the videos, these is this, this live sessions, we are putting them in YouTube. One of you, Rostondo, specifically was asking on behalf of the members that can we have these notes. That means the PowerPoint notes. But I said, well, instead of sending them to you directly, each one of you, uh, sending them to you, we have the video. If the video is not clear, maybe some will say, okay, we can still send you these PowerPoint notes, but they will be in they're incorporated in the video because we are recording this class live sessions. And as you see, maybe you can see in your button, this recording is live. We've recorded them so that they help you in terms of understanding the concepts more. What I want you to do, listen, gentlemen, is not to gram or memorize. I want you to understand the concept and see the process. When we talk of vertical integration, what do we mean exactly? Can we talk about it and its expansion? Why is it? What are the benefits? What are the pitfalls? How can it be done? Are there examples of companies that emerge and things like those? Those are the things that I was just going to mention here. And finally, I want your comments. May I have your quick comments on the class? Quick comments on this class. Quick comments in this, in this session, for this session. Quick comments for this session, for my own feedback for this session. And as you do that, uh, somebody, uh, I think your class rep, one of the class reps, Rustin Dub and the other, was asking about uh, neck cut. We'll give you a cut next week. That is cut two. We'll give you next week, cut two. Uh, we still, as you, you know, we still will continue up to the end of that week one. Eh? That's the first week of August. Eh? We'll give you cut two. And then, of course, assignment two. You have an assignment you are working on and you are working in groups. 
Remember, you're working in groups, groups of five. And if there are people who really cannot be able, there are 15 companies. Eh? And if there are people who really have a, a problem, uh, that those groups, please let me know. Otherwise, groups of five, so that you work on that semester assignment. That is very important because it gives you now ideas and it cements this course in terms of the strategic this strategic plan, which is actually more or less the blueprint of strategic management process. With that, I want to end there and wish you God's blessings. Thank you for those comments. I can see them there. Some companies can also merge. I can see there. Uh, nice, good session. Class was fantastic. The class was interesting. Very nice, though. The problem with the network connection. Some of you probably for that. Uh, was good. Yes, it was good session. Interactive. Yes. Now, I want you in future to be able to spare a few units to, to be able to... Uh, I know the problem people are using uh, only audio. You can also be occasionally uh, comment directly when we ask you questions please otherwise i want to wish you well uh, dorothy you are at the beginning you are there at the start thank you very much for being there to the end and tell your friends the station the train left station i can see you are 32 here 31 where are the others you know it's not good for us to be following up people and finding out where they are i'm taking of course what we call roll call and at the end of it all that roll call determine about those who are doing the exam you may do the exam, but you know, uh, we have also marks for attendance. That's what I should say. But unwritten marks for attendance. So make sure you attend and you in the, in the, you also uh, interact. And that way, it will be out of, uh, as we continue, we're doing well. The exam will be out of 50, by the way. Oh, oh, oh somebody was asking how old the exam. In fact, this semester, we are moving towards that. And uh, I'll clarify that next time, Eli Mugoe. You've said it. Yeah, I'll clarify that. Yes, thank you very much. Otherwise, I want to thank you and end this session. May the Lord bless you. Look, view those videos. Please make sure you go there and then make your comments with your one, with the two. Thank you very much and God bless you. Asante sana. Yeah.